Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Computer Hobbyist. Today I want to talk about John Romero's id software programming principles and whether they are still relevant in video game design and whether or not they're useful in non-video game programming projects. The first is no prototypes, just make the game. Polish as you go, don't depend on polish happening later. Always maintain constantly shippable code. I agree with the polish as you go and always maintain constantly shippable code. In any type of software development, one of the things that will really irritate your team is if you check in broken code in the TFS, Git, or whatever software repository you're using. These errors you checked in will prevent the rest of the team from being able to build when they get latest. As far as the no prototypes just make the game, I have mixed feelings on that one. One game I created turned out to be boring, and if I would have known that early on, I would have canceled the game and made something else. The flip side to this is creating a working prototype can take a lot of effort, but, but it's still less than creating the full game. The second principle is it's incredibly important that your game can always be run by your team. Bulletproof your engine by providing defaults upon load failure. This is definitely still relevant. However, many of you are using commercial engines, so this may already be done for you. If you're making your own engine, you would be wise to bulletproof it. This also is a good idea for non-video games also. It's always nice to use plenty of try-catch statements so that application will still run if a web service it is trying to access times out. Third, keep your code absolutely simple. Keep looking at your functions and figure out how you can simplify them further. This is 100% true in any type of programming. Always simplify when you figure out a way to do so. It will make your code more readable and reduce the size and complexity of the application. Fourth, great tools help make great games. Spend as much time on tools as possible. Many of today's programmers are lucky because most of the tools they need are built into the commercial engine they're using. However, there is always a solution you need that may not be implemented by a commercial product or plugin. In that case, stop what you're doing and make the tool. You'll be better off in the long run. If you're making your own engine, be advised there are plenty of commercial tools you can use, such as a tile editor, if you can't find what you need and make it. Fifth, we are our own best testing team and should never allow anyone else to experience bugs or see the game crash. Don't waste others' times. Test thoroughly before checking in your code. Every software team in the world should have this written on the front door and every wall in the place. This is 100% true. Some programmers are really lazy and don't test their code and just send it off to be tested by the in-house testing department. Every defect they find will cause everyone to have to do additional work, including you, and slow down the project. In addition, if your defect causes the application to crash, they will not be able to test further until you fix the problem and check in stable code into the repository. Sixth, as soon as you see a bug, you fix it. Do not continue on. If you don't fix your bugs, your new code will be built on a buggy code base and ensure an unstable foundation. This is 100% true in any type of programming. The root cause for the bug you just found may be causing five other bugs you haven't even discovered yet. Fixing it right away will save you a lot of work in the future. The worst thing you can do is to have a post-it note on your monitor listing bugs you're going to fix later. Seventh, write your code for this game only, not a future game. You're going to be writing new code later because you'll be smarter. I originally had mixed feelings about this, but I think now I understand what John Romero means. It's a waste of time to create functionality that won't be used in this game. Like you said, you'll be smarter in the future and you may be re rewriting that code later. Eighth, encapsulate functionality to ensure design consistency. This minimizes mistakes and saves design time. This is still 100% true, especially since most programming now is object-oriented programming. In fact, one of the pillars of object-oriented programming is encapsulation. As a side note, id Software didn't use object-oriented programming until after the Quake series of games. However, they were still able to encapsulate functionality in their C code. Ninth. Try to code transparently. Tell your lead and peers exactly how you're going to solve your current task and get feedback and advice. Do not treat game programming like each coder is a black box. The project could go off the rails and cause delays. This is very true if you're programming on a team. 
Often the people you are presenting your plan of action to may have done something similar in the past and will show you a better way to do it. If you are a solo game developer who does all his own coding graphics well, then this rule doesn't apply. Tenth, programming is a creative art form based in logic. Every programmer is different and will code differently. It's the output that matters. I disagree with this one completely. On a team, everyone needs to be on the same page and exercise the same coding standards. It makes it difficult for you to debug someone else's code if they're doing things differently than everybody else. A good example of this outside of video game development would be everybody in a team except one person writing REST services, but you have that one bozo who refuses to learn anything new and still uses traditional SOAP web services. Eleventh, use a superior development system than your target. I have mixed feelings about this one. In some cases, this will really help you as you can create super fast tools uh, to assist with your development. However, some game engine products are difficult to port to other systems. Thus, if you're using a Mac to do your development on, you may have a headache trying to port to Windows. If you're using something that is really portable like Monogame, this won't be an issue. That's all I have. Post in the comments section what you think of these id software programming principles. Have a good evening.